Hi guys, welcome back to Do It Yourself and today I'm going to be showing you how to solder Yorkshire fittings. Now this channel is all about saving you money and teaching you a skill as easily as I can and the best way to do that is to show you how to use Yorkshire fittings or solder ring fittings some might call them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut a piece of copper pipe properly, prepare it properly and solder these fittings to this piece of pipe. So if this is the sort of thing you like to see, subscribe to the channel because there's loads of this sort of thing coming up, loads of plumbing tips, things like how to use push fits, compression fittings, how to stop leaks. So first of all, a little bit about Yorkshire fittings. These are a good option for people who don't want to do end feed solder and end feed solder is slightly prettier but it does take more work and more technique. These are a much quicker alternative for your typical do-it-yourself at home job. We have a ring of solder inside which you can see running around the joint. Okay, so when you heat this up, those rings of solder melt and actually create a perfect joint. Okay, so there's a few bits and pieces you're going to need. A few tools and of course some consumables as well. So the first thing you're going to need is a blowtorch of some description. Now you can get basic ones like this that are quite cheap or you can get auto light blow torches with matte gas and things like that but today I'm going to show you one of these because this is the easiest sort of torch for you to learn with without spending loads of money you know they're not professional level but they're great for do it yourself and they're quite cheap so I'm going to show you one of these also as we're using 15 mil copper pipe grab yourself a 15 mil pipe cutter if you're using 22 obviously you're going to want to grab a 22 mil one you're going to want a deburring tool for deburring the inside of the pipe and the outside of the pipe when you've cut it. You're also going to want some wire wool. Well, I like to use wire wool. There's a few different methods. Some people use the scotch pads. Um, I like to use them for cleaning the inside of the fitting, but I like to use wire wool for the outside of the pipe. You're going to want a rag, any rag will do. A tape measure, but that's optional dependent on the job that you're doing. Again, optional dependent on the job that you're doing. You might want a heat proof mat. Basically, if you're doing something under a sink or between some joists, you don't want to catch anything alight. So this is quite important. And you can solder pretty much straight onto this without causing any damage. A lighter, in my case, because I'm not using an auto lighting torch. You'll also want to grab yourself some flux. I'll explain to you a little bit more about what this does in a minute. This is a self-cleaning flux, but basically get yourself a lead-free flux of any kind. Now, of course, you're going to want some copper pipe. This is 15 mil that we're using today. And you'll want some fittings, whichever fittings you need to use as well. I'll put a link in the description for you for a lot of these handy plumbing tools that you might need. So the first thing we need to look at is how to cut and prepare a piece of copper pipe. Obviously, this will be dependent on whatever job you're doing. So that's where a tape measure and a little bit of planning is going to come in handy. You know, if you put some taps in on whatever you're doing, make sure you're measuring the correct amount of copper pipe that you need. Now how to cut a piece of copper pipe. 15mm pipe cutter, 15mm copper pipe. Measure off the length that you need. Put that inside our pipe cutter. And rotate whatever way the arrow says on your pipe cutter. Keep turning and it will drop off nicely. Now when you cut a piece of copper pipe, you'll see this kind of beveled edge. It's quite a nice looking edge. When you get a piece of copper pipe new, it doesn't have that beveled edge. So even when using a piece of new copper pipe, you still need to cut the end off from the factory. You can see the difference there. So what we'll go ahead and do is just lose that end piece off that pipe. Now this copper pipe is fairly new so it looks nice and shiny, however this could have all kinds of oils or scores on the pipe so we need to prepare this piece of pipe properly. Sometimes if copper pipe has been left for a long time it will oxidise. Let me grab a bit to show you, like this, so you can see this is older pipe, even this here is probably only three weeks old and look at the difference in colour already. So what we'll do is we'll clean this up, I'll show you on the older bit so it's a little bit clearer for you. When we're preparing the exterior surface of the pipe, 
just check that we've got no really big gouges in the pipe. So with your wire wool, you only need to clean up the end of the pipe that's going to go inside the fitting. Grab your wire wool, just go around the pipe a few times. And you can see there, that's now nicely prepared. So now what we need to do, grab your deburring tool, just deburr the end of the pipe. You don't need to go too mad, just a few turns. There we go. So that's deburred the inside of the pipe. And then we'll just use this side to deburr the exterior of the pipe. Now it's also important that we prepare our Yorkshire fitting. We can use a self-cleaning flux. It's actually quite easy to do that on these fittings because we can just use the brush inside the flux to do that. I like to just make sure, just get our pad in there and just give that a little clean out inside the fitting just to make sure there's nothing in there that's going to stop our solder coming into contact with the copper properly. Okay, so next what we're going to do is I'll show you how to apply the flux. Now, this is important. So some of these flux containers come with the little brush inside. Some, you'll have to use a small flux brush to do this, but make sure you've got enough flux just around the end of the pipe where the fitting's gonna go. Flux over time, if not cleaned away, can actually be corrosive. So we don't wanna apply excessive amounts, just enough to make the solder adhere to the pipe. We need to make sure we put a little bit of flux inside the fitting as well. Okay, just like that. You can see there's plenty of flux in there and on the pipe. When you're soldering using Yorkshire fittings, when you heat this joint up, it will actually heat up the whole joint, causing the ring of solder inside the fitting to melt. So it's very important that we plan ahead and actually solder the complete joint. And what I mean by that is we don't just solder this fitting to this piece of pipe and then come back and solder our next piece of pipe later. What we actually do is solder both pieces of pipe at the same time. And that also applies if you're using a T-piece. So you would solder all three joints at the same time. So once we're happy with the positioning of the joint, we'll go ahead and solder this. But once we've soldered it, that's it. So we need to make sure we've measured correctly and we're happy with where this is gonna be. Now, if we were to solder this like this, what would happen is when this heats up, the flux would melt and this piece of pipe here would actually drop out onto the floor. So there is a little trick that we can do, which a plumber once taught me, using a tape measure. And what we're gonna do is you stand your tape measure on the floor, lock your tape measure at the correct height to hold that pipe in place. So now our pipe's prepared, let's go ahead and solder this joint. When you're soldering, you wanna make sure you solder from the bottom of your pipe. There's a couple of reasons for that. So if you heat up the bottom of the pipe, what you'll find is heat rises and you'll get a more even soldering joint that way. The other reason to do it this way is capillary action. So if you were to heat up the top of the pipe and the bottom of the pipe was cold, the solder would run down but it wouldn't be hot enough to do its job. And when we're heating, we do it nice and evenly. So when you're not using map gas, give your bottle a shake, otherwise you can get some pretty big flames, which actually won't be too bad on a cold day like today. Now, when this solder's melted, you'll see a ring run around the outside of the fit. Nice and evenly. See now that that ring of solder is starting to go around the fit in there. Perfect. So what you can see here is this ring of solder that has now appeared just around the fit and you can see it there. Once you can see that all the way around the fit in, you know that that's perfect and that you've got a nice soldered joint. We're going to leave this to cool for a few minutes. 
Don't go ahead and wipe this with anything or touch it because obviously you're going to burn your hands. Do not dip it in water or anything like that or spray it to try and speed up the cooling process because you can fracture the solder joint. Also, some plumbers will actually clean that joint up whilst it's still very hot. That can also cause a fracture on the joint. I don't recommend doing that at all. Okay, so now our joint has cooled down. What we want to do is just give it a wipe. Okay, so now this has cooled down. Just give the joint a wipe, wipe off any of the excess flux because again that's a corrosive so we don't want to leave a load of that hanging around on the pipe. Let's grab our wire wool, just give this a clean up, that will get rid of any heat marks and any flux hanging around on the joint and it just looks much prettier. Okay so that is a perfectly soldered joint. Thanks for watching the video, I hope that's taught you a thing or two about how to solder Yorkshire fittings. If this is the sort of thing you like, please subscribe. There's loads of plumbing videos coming up. I'll see you guys in the next one.